The presidential candidates are back on the campaign trail after last night's debate, which is being described as chaotic, tumultuous, even downright embarrassing. Here's what Biden had to say while on a train tour today through Ohio and Pennsylvania when asked about undecided voters who watched last night. I kind of thought at one point, maybe I shouldn't say this, but uh, the president of the United States conducting himself the way he did, um, I think it was just a, a national embarrassment. Um, and uh, But look, uh, um, I just hope that the American people and those undecided voters uh, try to determine what each of us has as an answer for their concerns and allows us to actually speak. President Trump and Joe Biden exchanged attacks last night, and here's what happened when Biden was asked if he would support packing the Supreme Court. You should go out and vote. You're in voting now. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Court? Let Vote now. Are you going to pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that because question? Because the you question want to put is, a lot of the new question Supreme is, the radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, your, man. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? Right. Gentlemen, this is, I think this we've is ended so this. This is so unprecedented. A CBS News poll among debate watchers found 69% say the debate made them feel annoyed. CBS News' Natalie Brand reports. The first presidential debate was marked by chaos, personal insults, and interruptions, more than 70 of them. Everybody knows he's a liar. But you I just agree. want to make sure. Joe, you're the, liar. I, I, the two candidates sparred over health care. He wants to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. What is the Trump health care plan? Right. Well, First of all, I guess I'm debating you, not him. I'm cutting drug prices. They also clashed over the economy and the coronavirus. People want their schools open. They don't want to be shut down. You can't fix the economy until you fix the COVID crisis. President Trump denied a New York Times report that he paid only $750 in federal income taxes in 2016 and 2017. I paid millions of dollars in taxes, millions of dollars of income tax. Show us your tax returns. I went uh, you'll see it as soon as it's finished. You'll see it. One of the most striking moments of the debate was President Trump's response when asked if he would condemn white supremacy groups. And would you like Paris, me to condemn white Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud Proud boys. Boys, Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. Members of the far-right, self-described Western chauvinist group were listening. They quickly added Mr. Trump's words to their logo. He is refusing to condemn white supremacy. Why is that so hard for the president of the United States? Well, I think he has. I mean, I've been in press conferences when he has. I mean, I've seen him say it repeatedly. So, you know, he's condemned many white supremacist groups. President Trump returns to the campaign trail tonight with a rally in Minnesota. Democratic nominee Joe Biden has begun a train tour of Ohio and Pennsylvania to critical battleground states. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Ed O'Keefe is our CBS News political correspondent, and he joins me now. Hi, Ed. So the Commission on Presidential Debates put out a statement saying, quote, last night's debate made clear additional structure should be added to the format of the remaining debates to ensure a more orderly discussion of the issues. Are you hearing what sort of changes may happen? I, you know, I've heard people suggest there should be a mute button after two minutes or, you know, like your third grade teacher used to do when when the kids were misbehaving, just turn off the lights until everybody's quiet. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get that elementary, uh, Tanya, but there is no debate that the Commission <laughs> on Debates needs to make some changes to the next debate. And they say that they're going to debate those changes and announce them later. So they've got until next Thursday for the vice presidential debate, should they feel the need to insert some rules changes there. Otherwise, the next debate between the president and Joe Biden is on October 15th in Miami. And it's one that actually will involve questions from everyday Americans, undecided voters. And so that format and that structure is already going to be different because there is a fourth component in essence. There's the two candidates, the moderator, and the crowd that is asking questions. So there is the potential right. for the president and Biden to potentially comport themselves a little differently. We'll see. But the fact that this nonpartisan commission 
that has been in place since the 1988 presidential campaign cycle and has hosted every debate since then in coordination with the two campaigns and the television networks, today so quickly came out and said something like this is quite notable. This is one of those institutions that's sort of hesitant to change, uh, you know, is, is sort of seen as a uh, sort of an institutional hallmark of American politics. For them to so quickly turn on a dime and admit that they've got to consider some kind of a change is telling. And then, of course, the question will be, do the Biden and Trump campaigns agree to those changes or do they potentially mm -hmm. withhold participation because of them? Well, of course, if these debates are actually going to inform the American people on the candidates' positions, they have to actually be able to hear the candidates speak. Now, you know, uh, Ed, a CBS News poll of debate watchers found 69 percent came away feeling annoyed. Only 17 percent felt informed. So what do you take away from that? Is anyone going to tune in to the next two debates? We'll see. Uh, I, I'm impressed that at least 17 percent found it informative. Mm -hmm. um, Early indications are that the overall ratings, when you take all the television ratings from last night, were actually down from four years ago somewhat significantly. Maybe that's because instead of watching it on conventional television, they're watching it on CBSN uh, or some other streaming <laughs> platform. But it is also likely that many people just simply didn't bother tuning in, that they've been so disgusted and zoned out by this campaign that they don't feel the need. But the other reason, too, is, and we talk about this frequently here, only 6% of Americans haven't made up their mind. So if you're someone who's made up your mind, you probably found something else to do last night thinking, I have no reason to tune in. Right. Good point. So Ed, the Biden campaign says it had its best online fundraising hour to date after last night. So I guess that could be counted as successful. They raised nearly four million dollars between 10 and 11 p.m. You know, does this show then that people or at least Biden supporters were pleased with his performance? It, it certainly would, although we have no way of comparing it yet to what the president might have raised, uh, whether it was around the same or not nearly as close. Uh, 3.8 million in one hour is a very good take because we believe around the time that Kamala Harris was chosen as Joe Biden's running mate, for example, that he was raising about a million bucks an hour. So that would show you, at least in that condensed time frame, uh, the intensity level, the willingness of people to give was that much higher. That's no surprise. Um, we've seen this in the past where you know, debate nights or other big moments are also a fundraising draw. Uh, there were several text messages mm -hmm. and emails sent out to Democrats throughout the day and during and after the debate last night. So it's perhaps not that surprising. But a, another sign that going into these final 34 days, the Biden campaign is a well-oiled, well-financed machine and able to spend that money in all sorts of ways. The mere fact that we're here in rural eastern Ohio uh, a part of a state that CBS considers to be a battleground and one that Biden probably wouldn't have necessarily spent time in given that, you know, it went Republican last time, that they sort of see this as a state they'd like to get, uh, didn't think they could, but polling recently has now shown that it actually could be very well within reach. That's a sign that they believe they can take the time and spend the money to be here today, snake their way into western Pennsylvania, a key region of another key state next door that they'd like to take back. Absolutely. I also want to bring in now CBS News political director, Caitlin Conant. Welcome, Caitlin. So, you know, over one million people have already voted in this election. How much do these debates really matter at the end of the day? Well, hi, and first of all, thanks for dealing with my tech difficulties here at home. I apologize that I'm late, but I think that last night was the last best chance for President Trump to change the trajectory of this race. And he had a chance to speak to the American public and give his case to voters on why he deserves a second term. And so the stakes were high, and it was an opportunity um, for him to address any of the voters whose mind may not be totally made up at this point. Granted, there are, not, there are not many, and I think we saw that in our polls, that people's views are locked in. But he does have to make ground with some of those key voters that he lost, in, that voted for him in 2016, and have since moved towards Joe Biden and the Democrats. And those include women, suburban voters, and independents. And many of them say that they 
are really not pleased with the president's tweets, what they describe as his chaotic leadership style. And so last night, the president brought that chaos to the debate stage, and he acted as a disruptor, um, trying to throw Joe Biden off his game, uh, make him feel uncomfortable. Um, and I think all of that led to the chaos that has actually turned many of those 2016 voters and those key demographics away from him. So in many ways, what was not said and what was not done is equally as important at what was said. Yes, it does seem if he was targeting those key demographics, those suburbanites, those women, that he wasn't making a huge effort to speak to those people. Because as you pointed out, we know that some of those tactics of the president's are not their favorite for that demographic. And we have seen the president in the past speak to those people in a little bit of a more presidential manner. Uh, so I, I was a little surprised to see him going for full bluster. What do you think will happen with the two more debates left? What about those undecided voters? Do you think they've seen enough based on last night? Or are they still going to wait for two more debates before making up their minds? Well, I know Ed spoke to this earlier, but I wasn't surprised to hear that a lot of people were annoyed by the debate last night because I guess we were all watching the same debate. And I think that when you have crosstalk and interruptions and as a viewer, when it's just hard to even understand what the candidates are trying to say, it's very frustrating and very distracting. And then when you put on top of that the weight of all of the issues that voters and people in this country are going through right now, whether it's they've lost a job, they've lost a loved one, they are dealing with their kids not in school while working full time. There are tough issues that people want addressed and want leadership and want to know when and how are their lives going to get back to normal. And I think that a lot of people walked away from last night unsatisfied. And so we'll see if there's change in tactics um, in the next couple debates here. So, Ed, you are in Ohio because Joe Biden is taking a train tour through that state. You are following the Biden campaign as well as through Pennsylvania today. So Ohio is definitely a toss up state in this race. Talk about what winning that state could mean for each candidate. Well, if, if Joe Biden wins Ohio, it probably lights out for the Trump campaign because well, first of all, there's this great historical fact that no Republican president has won the White House, at least since like the 1870s, without the Buckeye State. So if Trump can't win Ohio, he's going to have to pull it off in other places right now uh, that right now suggest he, he just can't do it. He would have to win places like Arizona. He'd have to win Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida. And, and, and all of the surveys done by CBS and others suggest that that's a, that's a tall tale right now, or a tall hill to climb right now. So Biden would love to do it. Uh, probably, if it happens, it would be icing on a cake that's already been baked at that point. And the way he would do it is by running up the numbers in the suburbs of the big three C's in this state, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland, where there is evidence that support for Biden is growing among independents, among Democrats, even among some Republicans. But the way that you can close that margin even more is by winning back parts of the state like this here in Alliance, Ohio. This is Congressman Tim Ryan's congressional district. He ran briefly for president. You may remember he was the guy that challenged Nancy Pelosi for the speakership after uh, elections a few years ago, arguing that the Democratic Party was tilting too far to the left. Well, no surprise he's a Joe Biden supporter and has been since the primaries because he knows that a Joe Biden style Democrat can win back Eastern Ohio and conceivably put the Buckeye State back in the blue column for Democrats. So by just making the tour through here quickly today in this pandemic era when it's very difficult to be out and about, or at least the Biden campaign takes precautions while doing so, it's a signal, they hope, to this part of the state that Biden's listening and is eager for their support. This is a part of the state that the president's been to before. He enjoys broad support. There were several dozen Trump supporters outside this event today where inside Biden only had a few invited guests and us reporters, a sign that on the ground here, the Trump campaign has an operation. Uh, but the Biden team, again, speaking to the fact that they have the resources, believes they can afford to spend some time here and hopefully win back some votes. It'll be a tough and interesting race there in Ohio. All right, Caitlin Conan and Ed O'Keefe, thanks to both of you for joining us.